The next lab that we're going to look at on the ASA is access control lists, which I will call ACLs for short. And really, these are the first line of defence when it comes to network security with a firewall. Now, an ACL is a list of rules with permit or deny statements that can be applied to a firewall interface in either an inbound or an outbound traffic direction. And if it's applied inbound, like in, then the security rule is applied to traffic entering the interface. And if it's applied outbound, which we'll call out, obviously, then the ACL is applied to traffic leaving the interface. Now, a long time ago, there was this senior firewall engineer and he told me, always try to apply ACLs in an inbound direction. At the time, I didn't really understand what he was talking about. So obviously I asked why. And he was like, listen, do, do you want to apply all your NAT, PAT, threat detection and other application inspection rules only to then drop the packet when it's coming out? No. So I was like, oh, right. I understand what he was talking about. So I don't really use um, ACLs in an outbound direction after that. I mean, very, very rarely, but majority of times they're um, used in an inbound direction. On the ASA, there are a few types of ACLs that I'd like to cover. Now, the first one is the standard ACL. And if you're used to standard ACLs, like on a router, then apart from some specific corner cases, they're not really used on the ASA. The majority of ACLs will be configured of the extended variety, which means that we will specify the source, destination and information about the protocol that will be matched. Also, we need to know that by default, the ASA only allows traffic to flow from a higher security level to a lower security interface, but not the other way around unless you specifically um, configure that in the ACL. Then we've got the ether type. Now, the documentation states that ether type ACLs are used to control traffic that matches a specific ether type. But what does that even mean? Well, every ethernet frame header has a source, a destination, MAC address. But there's also a third field called the ether type or ether type. When a frame is being processed at layer two, the device has to understand what's going to happen at layer three. Now, the majority of times, the devices are only running IP version four, so it's pretty straightforward. But what if the device is like dual stacked running IP version four and IP version 6, and sometimes it might even be running MPLS. Which layer 3 process is going to be used then? The ether type values inform the device which layer 3 element should be processing the information. So even if you've got the same source and MAC address, then the ether type values determine if it will be processed by IP version 4 or by IP version 6 or by MPLS. And there are more ether type values, but I'm not even going to be configuring ether type ACLs. It's really just theory for you to get a good understanding of what's going on. So we're going to jump onto our topology and it's similar to what we had previously, but you can see now that I've added um, a few additional loopback interfaces to our interface router. So we've got 143.12.0.0, I will make it actually, 143.12.0.0 to 143.12.0.5. And let me just check that actually. And for our outside, if I was to do a show IP interface brief, yeah, we you see that we've got 0, 143.12.0.0 to 143.12.0.4. Let me just add the extra one, actually. It won't hurt. So interface, loop back 0, IP address 143.12.0.5, and a slash 32. I could probably also add that to our diagram here. So we've got an additional set of loopbacks and we shouldn't actually have reachability to those until I put the static routes in. So if I try to ping that from our inside network, ping 143.12.0.0. Yeah, we don't have reachability. And you know, the thing that I don't like with, I mean, I'm not poo-pooing on other people's courses, but you see when they're doing access lists and these things and they say, oh, Let's do a ping. Let's do a telnet. And this is how you would do a telnet. But they don't actually show you the telnet going through. Or things like, let's do HTTPS. This access list will only allow HTTPS. But we don't have any device to HTTPS to. Well, we do in this lab. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to have an access list that will only allow HTTP access to the CLI router from our Windows server. 
But first I need to get reachability. So let's jump on our Windows server and see if we can ping this interface, which is 10.1.1.1 from our Windows server. Jump on the command line. If I say ping 10.1.1.1. So we currently don't have reachability and there's a couple of reasons for this. First, our Windows server, if we do our root print, we can see we don't have a static root, a default root. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a default root here saying to get anywhere, go to our gateway, which is 192.168.1.5, which is this IP address on the ASDN, 192.168.1.5. And to add that static root, I should just have to say root add 0 .0 0.0.0 with a mask of 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0 and our gateway is 192.168.1.5 so what have I done wrong there the root addition failed the parameter is incorrect okay I've added an extra dot on the end of our mask right guys I have a request from you if you're enjoying the free content I'm looking to increase my subscriber count to 4,000 subscribers by June but I can only do that if you give me the play special. Do you want to know what the play special is? Press like and yeah, subscribe. Okay, back to the video. Let's see if I can ping that now. Ping 10.1.1.1. Oh, yes. So I have reachability now. So um, for me to be able to... see, Let's see if I already can do HTTPS to this. And by the time I finish this access list, I shouldn't be able to ping, but I should be able to get onto the ASDM for the CLI firewall. So let's close this. So currently, HTTPS 10.1.1.1. Yeah, and it shouldn't work because I need to do some extra bits on the CLI firewall. So let's jump over there and do that. And to enable access to this, I should say HTTP server enable and also HTTP, I think it's something like 192.168.1.0 to come in from the 192.168.1.0 network and it will be coming in on the DMZ interface, is it like this? Okay, so if I jump back over to our Windows server now and try that again, will that work? Yes. All right. All right, that's good. So I now have HTTPS access to our CLI firewall. And what I want to do is keep HTTPS access, but I want to restrict pings. So by the time I do this firewall, we shouldn't be able to ping. And you usually do it closest to the source. So I will be doing this on our ASDM firewall. So we'll have two ASDMs open. So if I jump on the command line and say HTTPS 192, oh, sorry, not like that. 192.168.1.5. And maybe I should have done it the other way around. Maybe I should have restricted HTTPS access and kept pings, but we'll continue this way. Let's run our ASDM. All right, so jump into configuration. First thing I'm gonna do is change the um, device name. I didn't do that previously, and it's remaining a Cisco ASA, which I don't like. So we're going to call this Router Coach ASDM Firewall, and the domain name is routercoach.com. Supply that, looks good to me. All right, now we need to set up a static route. So to set, um, not a static route, sorry, a fire, an ACL, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. So to do an ACL, we're going to our firewall, access rules, we're going to add a rule, and this rule is going to say, coming in on our closest to the source is the management interface. So on our management interface, our source is going to be from 
192.168.1.10 going to anywhere and we're actually going to deny ICMP which is our ping so our service will be ICMP and that should be it as far as I know let's say OK let's see what it's actually going to send supply that so access list management access in extended deny ICMP from host 192.168.1.10 going anywhere um, that should actually work so let's send that now when I send that I should no longer be able to ping but I should still have access to the CLI firewall web browser for ASDM so let's jump on here oh we're already on there let's minimize this let's go to our web browser first check that that works and because we've got an implicit deny all at our because we have an implicit deny all, I may have done this the wrong way around. So actually nothing should work here. So let me refresh that. Even this shouldn't work because we've denied ICMP and we've also got an implicit deny which denies everything else. So nothing will be allowed. So I've done that static route the wrong way around. So let me jump back onto our ASDM. And what I should have done, is this still open? No. So run ASDM again. Yeah, here we go. That's still open. So that is the wrong rule. So let's delete that rule and add another rule. So we're going to permit from 192 going to a particular source, which is 10.1.1.1 equal to HTTPS. And this will only allow from our management source Actually, let me not say that particular source because I want to keep the ASDM open as well. Maybe that wouldn't work, even though it's directly connected. It should be okay. Let's just say any. So going from 192.168.1.10 going anywhere equal to HTTPS is going to be allowed, but it's not going to be allowed to ping. So say okay on that. And then our implicit, uh, implicit deny at the end of the ACL will deny everything else. Let's apply that. Okay, looks good. All right, should still be okay. Right, now let's see if we can ping and get HTTPS access to our CLI firewall. So first, let's do a refresh on this and I'm expecting when this we will see the ASDM login prompt because HTTPS is now allowed. Yeah, and then let's try to ping, which I'm expecting the ping will not work. Open up a command prompt. Let's ping. Yeah, and the ping doesn't work. So we need to remember that there's an implicit deny at the end of every ACL. So that's the first one. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to allow pings from our inside network all the way to these loopbacks on our outside network, but we're going to deny one or two of those um, networks. So again, we're going to do this from the CLI because the CLI is closest to the inside network. So let's jump onto the CLI firewall which is here. And I might have to do some additional configuration because currently I'm not sure if we can ping all the way across. So ping 143.12.0.0. No, we are not able to ping across and we need to figure out why. So the next thing I will jump on is the DMZ. Is the DMZ able to ping? Our DMZ router, ping 143.12.0.0. No, it is not. All right, can it ping? 209.10.12.2, which is our outside. Okay, so it looks like this DMZ doesn't have a static route to get to the 143.0.0 network. And our ASDM probably also doesn't have a static route. So let's have a look here first. So show IP route static. No, it doesn't. So let's configure it here first. IP route to get to the 143.12.0.0 network on a slash 24, our next stop is 10.1.2.1. Let's save that. Then look on our ASDM and see if it has the static route. So I need to go back to device setup, routing, and static routes. And we need to add one here as well. So going out of our outside interface, 
network is 143.12.0.0 slash 24 and our gateway IP is 209.10.12.2 that should work I'm not going to change the metric apply that okay that's what's going to be sent to our command line let's save that configuration now let's jump back onto our inside route and see if we've got reachability so from inside can we now ping ping 143.12.0.0 still unable to ping can we ping 209.10.12.2 we can so we could get all the way across let me see if there's a what kind of static routing we've got here show ip root static all right we've got a default route out so that's fine it's not on this one where else do i need a static route all right let me do it step by step so can the dmz get there do ping 143.12.0.0 no i can't get there from the dmz oh i could get to okay is there an issue with the 143.12.0.0 network let me look on the outside show ip interface brief so i've basically got rid of the um, 0, 0.0 network so that was the whole issue so let's go back onto the inside and see if we could ping 143.12.0.1 yeah all right it was my own mistake i changed the configuration for loopback zero previously it was 143.12.0.0 and i changed it to 143.12.0.5 so we have reachability all the way across to the outside network loopback interfaces let's see if we can telnet to those so telnet to 143.12.0.1 and i have telnet access by the looks of things okay i haven't set a password so what i want to do i want to allow ping from our inside network to 143.12.0.1 2 and 3 but i will deny four and five and to do that i will have to jump onto our cli and set an access list so access list let's call it inside to outside loopbacks or just loop it's going to be an extended access list extended and then i'm going to say permit host which is where I am. Oh, let me not say host. Let me just say permit any. Permit any. So from any host to get to 143.12.0.1. Let me say host. Permit anywhere to get to host 143.12.0.1. I don't feel like I've done this right. Let me start. So for permit. Yeah, commit ICMP from anywhere to host 143.12.0.1. And then I could also say 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. Let me check that access list. So show access list. Excellent. And then I also have to allow telnet so we're going to say the first one one equal to port 23 and we need to also change our icmp to and the last one is 143.12.0.3 so Access list inside outside loopback extended permit TCP from any from anywhere to host 143.12.0.3 equal to um, port 23 which is Telnet. Now if we look at this access list, show access list, we can see it's getting quite long already. It's one, two, three, four, five, six lines long. 
and then we need to do an access group access group for inside dash outside dash loop coming in so it's an inbound access list interface inside and it's being applied all right now from the inside i should still be able to telnet to 143.12.0.1 which i can i should also be able to ping 143.12.0.1 which i can but i shouldn't be able to ping 143.0.4 which i cannot and i shouldn't also be able to telnet to 143.12.0.5 which i also cannot so that is it for static routes as you can see when we jump onto our cli router doing it this way it can be quite long and if you remember if you imagine if we had like hundreds of hosts and hundreds of different routers that we need to access these access lists could start getting out of hand be quite huge and in the next lab we'll see how we can shorten that and make it a lot more defined a lot more succinct with just using object groups so i'll see you in the next lab